Hi, Scott Orlin with Cinema Magazine. A new TV miniseries is coming your way. It is called A Teacher, and I'm here with that teacher, Kate Mara. Kate, um, let's just kind of start right off the bat. How good of a teacher would you be? <laughs> well, I'd like to think that I would be a pretty good teacher. I don't know that. I think that teachers have incredible patience, and um, my patience is tried on a daily basis with my kids, so... Uh, I don't know. I think that this quarantine life is proving that most parents are not the greatest teachers, myself included. Um, I have a lot of respect for them. <laughs> I don't think people or maybe people won't necessarily realize when they watch that it's that it's based on, I think, a 2013 film uh, called A Teacher as well. How much of that was a source of reference for you? Well, I had seen the film um, way back when which I'm happy about because I, you know, I was a fan of our director, creator Hannah's um, from watching that. And when, so when she reached out to me, I don't know how many years ago now, three or four years ago, and she asked if I'd be interested in producing and starring in this series, I had already known what kind of filmmaker she was and also, you know, what it was based on. And I just immediately jumped at the opportunity. So but other than that, we really wanted to make this stand alone. We didn't want it to be, we wanted to make it, you know, different in a lot of ways. So, um, you know, people who haven't seen it, it doesn't matter. People who are fans of it, this will still be new and, um, you know, exciting to them. Uh, for those maybe if we're tuning into this and haven't quite seen the show, the whole concept is this teacher and this student forge a relationship and, what happens on that journey. And this is not an anomaly. It actually is ripped from the headlines around the world. It, it's happening. But I thought in this particular case, what was so fascinating is as an audience member, my moral dilemma is when we first meet these two characters, we like them. There's a lot of empathy we have. And yet then this incident happens. And I'm starting to question, do I continue to like them? Or should I be... Uh, kind of re refracted from that because of what they're doing. Yeah, I think that that's nice to hear because I think that that is a testament to the writers um, and to Hannah because that was really important to us to not just make, you know, Claire, who's obviously, she's, you know, it, it's she makes choices that have lasting consequences and she's clearly the abuser, but we we didn't want her to just be this, you know, evil character. We wanted her to be, human and for people who are watching to actually look at her you know in in a real way and and for it to be complicated um so that's nice to hear and i and i do think that's because we had such a great writers room how much do you want audiences to engage in a discussion i mean sometimes there are water cooler uh, events that we see, or the next yeah. day you need to talk to somebody about what you just saw. That is, I, I think that's one of the main reasons we wanted to make the show is because this type of thing, as you said, happens all the time. And I think without conversations about it, nothing ever changes, right? So um, I think this is definitely one of those pieces that is going to have people arguing um, and for good reason. And yeah, I hope it is something that people sort of, you know, finish an episode and just, you know, talk about it for, for hours afterwards. Um, that's, that's, I think, one of the, the main goals. It would be easy to paint your character in very dark colors and say, oh my God, she's a predator and, and all this other kind of stuff. But yet having some empathy as we kind of go into her story in a strange way, even though she's married, this is like a sexual awakening for her. It's almost like she's discovering an aspect of herself that she didn't know existed. I, I, I wanted to play the character because of all of the different layers that she has and for all of the different reasons that she makes the choices that she does. Um, you know, it's not just one reason and um you know I want I wanted it to be complicated and I wanted people to not relate to the choice that she makes but to relate to her maybe before she makes the choice and um you know to have empathy for her maybe later on 
when you hear more about her past, et cetera, so that she's not just, you know, this evil woman, you know, you can, you can for, for sure disagree with the, the, her, the choices that she's made, but I, but I didn't want it to be so simple. Okay. This is the confessional part here for a lot of teenagers. <laughs> When you get a hickey, that's a badge of honor. I mean, that's really cool. Your character gets one in this. Do you remember your first hickey? Do you remember that first when you were a teenager? What an interesting question. Um, I, can, can I say I don't think I've ever received one? Whoa. Well, that's to, even another badge of honor. I have to go talk to my husband. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's okay. That's okay. And this is the last question for you. I remember having a crush on my first grade teacher. And, you know, maybe because you're six years old or or whatever, there's, as an adult that's engaging with you, whatever the, the reason it's for. But when you look back, was there a teacher that, I, I, don't, I hate to even say you had a crush on, but just had a sense of affinity for because they engaged you in such a way? Yeah, I think it's very, very common for kids to have crushes on their teachers or to look up to them. And that's, you know, that it's it's a very common thing. I, I was enamored with many of my teachers. I uh, My drama teacher inspired me in so many ways. I looked up to her, um, you know, that but that's that's the that's the I want to say um, I want to swear, but that's the messed up thing about this. This is for Europe. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Great, perfect. Um, that you know the the fact that that she uses her power in the way that she does, you know, as innocent as it may look or seem when you're watching it, it it's an abuse of power. Um, and you know that's that's where the that's where the fucked up things <laughs> come from. It's you know she she's she shouldn't be doing this no matter how young she might be and no matter how old her student might be. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Well, during this pandemic, thank for giving us something interesting to kind of engage with. I think that gets, it's kind of fun um, on many different levels. Kate Mara, the show is called The Teacher, and this is Scott Orland. Till next time. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was so nice to talk to you again. Great.